थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर मिस्टर चेयर दिस इज शमशेर मुबीन चौधरी आई एम सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यस देयर हैज बीन अ मेजर ट्रेजेडी इन माय फैमिली माय ब्रदर इन लॉ जस्ट पास्ड अवे ओ आई सी आई एम सो सॉरी सो आई हैव टू रश दैट कैन आई बी अलाउड टू से माय बिट नाउ सो आई कैन गो एंड स्पेंड टाइम विद माय सिस्टर माय ओनली सिस्टर certainly sir please go ahead and uh, before you uh, before you commence i would just like to mention uh, thank you panel sajid and uh, the major take away from your talk remains that when confronted with an adversary who fights solely with his head and with laid down plans a passion and fighting from the heart will always prevail thank you very much for your talk and now may i request uh, uh, so all yours thank you uh, chair and uh, thanks to clause for organizing this event on a very very historic day and a very historic time of the year uh, thanks also to general saina for his very comprehensive uh, uh, presentation of his paper now i, I will just say uh, start off by saying that uh, we start off our discussion paying respect to the father of bangladesh nation sheikh bangwad sheikh mujibur rahman whose inspiring leadership actually united a whole nation to unite and 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 rise and fight for its freedom now 9th of december for me uh, has a different uh, uh, significance and is relates to also to the indian air force uh, i was wounded in action in chittagong uh, at the very early stages of the war and was seriously wounded my right leg was almost blown off and i was taken a prisoner of war by the pakistanis and tortured mercilessly throughout uh my period of uh, incarceration they wanted me to become a state approver i refused they threatened me with a death penalty and i told them looking into their eyes that a mukti mukti juddha is never a bangali is never afraid to die when he's fighting for his country on 9th of december i was in a prisoners camp in sherabanga nagar in dhaka pakistan army had placed an anti aircraft gun there and uh, it was firing aimlessly everywhere every time there was a sound of indian air force approaching dhaka and in the afternoon when the indian air force approached that gun opened up again meaninglessly and we had feared that one of the shells from the indian air force would hit that gun and be believe me chair before i could finish my worry the it did hit that gun the, con the consequence was that my building caught fire so i was not only a prisoner i was prisoner in a building that had caught fire in the pakistan anyway we managed to get out of there and i was released on 17th of december after uh, the pakistan army surrendered now i will uh, everybody has uh, talked very comprehensively of the different aspects of 1971 uh, a, a year that changed the politics and uh, map of south asia uh, forever and uh, we have it uh, in, in, in numerous events and incidents to relate to and we have been talking about it for many many years i would uh, relate to a book written by the current indian external affairs minister uh, s uh, jay shankar which is called the india way in that very well book very well analyzed book mr jay shankar talks of the successes of indian foreign policy and believe me and rightly so he lists 1971 as among the top achievements of the indian foreign policy that uh india political decision of india to get involved in the bangladesh liberation war fight for freedom of people of bangladesh sacrifice their lives was not just a military success for india but was a major diplomatic achievement because the way prime minister indira gandhi had uh, managed the international community uh, before the indian army got into the action this was uh, uh, the decision to uh, uh, kind of put off uh, involvement of the indian military till the end of the year was also very political because there were some advisers of prime minister gandhi who had suggested an earlier involvement but uh, mrs gandhi the kind of leader she was she said we need to have a global public opinion that will justify an indian intervention otherwise we would be seen to be uh, just breaking up uh, a, a, a sovereign country and we shouldn't be seen as such be that as it may the uh, the history is written in blood it is a very rare history this is history is conditioned by geography it is shared history of sacrifice and i have mentioned in a book called bangladesh at 50 which has just come out very recently and i have talked of the events of 
1971 in uh, interestingly or the uh, uh, first visit by indian defense minister to bangladesh since the independence of bangladesh given the fact that defense cooperation between bangladesh and india started at the very birth of Bangladesh, where blood was shared by the Indian forces and the Bangladeshis, I think the defense cooperation should have, that should have been the foundation of our defense cooperation. For reasons known to everyone, uh, the defense cooperation in India uh, was not followed up to the manner that it, it should have been. And although the visit of then defense minister laid the foundation of uh, future course of Bangladesh-India relations, there is still a lot of work to be done. It is a work in progress. In my book, uh, Bangladesh at 50, in, in the book, Bangladesh 50, my chapter is on the 50 years of Bangladesh-India relations. And I will just quote from the uh, points that I have because of paucity of time and the uh, emergency in my family, that what I had said, uh, that this is the relationship that has a future because it's based on a remarkable past. And, but the future is one of being able to understand our shared uh, concerns, our shared security concerns. Uh, I have said that, uh, uh, for example, that uh, Indian uh, foreign policy or Indian domestic policy and Bangladesh's domestic politics should not be based on uh, a negative perception of each other. Because it is a very rare incidence of a relationship built on their blood. The action, the lot of people to people exchange, a lot of positive that happening, connectivity has become a major issue in relationship. But as Muzaman has said in his opening remarks, that there are things that still, still bother the mind of the average Bangladeshi. The major one, of course, is the absence of a more comprehensive agreement understanding of the shared waters of our rivers, or the rivers of our shared, uh, shared rivers uh, of the, the water sharing. Well, you only have one agreement on the Ganges Tista has been put off, it seems, uh, indefinitely. Then, so the killing of Bangladesh is on the border. No, the numbers have gone down. No, no doubt about that. Uh, but despite repeated assurances from Indian Prime Minister, starting with Dr. Manmohan Singh, going to the current Prime Minister, uh, Sri Narendra Modi, the fact that there should not even be a single death, the commitment of zero deaths on the border, it has not occurred. Then, of course, India's ambiguous position on the Rohingya crisis, where Bangladesh has shown enormous magnanimity by housing uh, more than 1 million Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh. Now, uh, it is as a smaller neighbor, and as a neighbor that is grateful to, to India, Bangladesh expects that India would use its leverage on Myanmar to find a, a solution that is acceptable to all, all sides. It is also uh, important to understand and policy makers on India's side, that India's geopolitical goals in the region must take the interests and concerns of Bangladesh into consideration and not be at the cost of it. Addressing the critical needs of proven friendly neighbor and not subjecting them to domestic political consideration is vitally important in sustaining trust. We build a relationship, we live with born trust and that trust has to be sustained. On the Bangladesh side, all political sides, all political uh, parties, must understand that connectivity, which under Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has taken a quantum leap, uh, connect between Bangladesh and India, is actually is not just connecting two governments, but connecting two peoples, two nations. And every political party should in Bangladesh should commit itself to furthering connectivity, uh, to a position where there is a seamless movement of people across the country, seamless movement of goods across the two countries. This will only enforce or reinforce the nature of the relationship. Uh, resorting to political rhetoric 
on both sides uh, may serve narrow political gains in the short term, but in the long term will not create a climate of mutual trust and confidence, which along with the mutuality of benefit is fundamental to keeping this relationship on the right track. A lot of positives are happening. I had spoken to Colonel Bajwa the day before, and I said that it is interesting to see that China, and whose position in 1971 is no secret, we all know it, has become a major source of procurement for the Bangladesh military. And I think it is important to address uh, policymakers in India that why should that be the case? Why not India should be the major source of military supply to Bangladesh? So I think the visit of the then Indian Defense Minister created the right kind of platform. Uh, a, a line of credit of $500 million initially was, uh, has, was earmarked. I don't know what is the progress of his disbursement. But given the history of our relationship, the future can only be bright. The future can only be good. And the future can only be to the mutual interest of both Bangladesh and India. Uh, as a freedom fighter myself, I was a prisoner. I am out today because of India's involvement in December 1971. So my sense of gratitude is even deeper. I would not have been alive. I was supposed to be hanged by the Pakistan army for treason. The prisoner cell where I was kept in December 1971, towards the end of the war, I had to vacate that cell because squadron leader Bhutani's aircraft had been shot down by the Pakistan military. And he was taken prisoner of war and he had to be moved into my cell so that I could, uh, so that, uh, and then I had to be moved out. So my sense of uh, uh, emotional link with the Indian military, the Indian Indian political decisions is much deeper. That is what I feel very, very importantly to sustain the strength of the relationship with where mutuality of interest, mutual respect has to be at the fore. I thank you once again, but I have to leave as I understand it is a major family tragedy. I thank Claus once again. It is wonderful talking to you, but I look forward to further interaction in the future. I'm writing my own book on 1971 now, which should be out by the end of the year, and I'll be happy to share it with my friends in India also. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Chaudhary, for that very, very candid uh, and very succinct uh, appraisal of uh, the past juxtaposed with the present. Uh, and, and I think uh, uh, the, the leadership in India is cognizant of the kind of relationship that India looks forward to with Bangladesh. And you made a very pertinent point as to why on earth is Bangladesh not buying Indian military equipment? And that is one issue that I think the Prime Minister has uh, has, has has laid forward in this uh, landscape of Atmanirbhar and, and development of indigenous uh, equipment and, and weapon systems, which I hope in the years ahead will propel uh, military sales between, uh, between India and Bangladesh, uh, because it would be much easier for uh, Indian industry uh, to service equipment that they provide to Bangladesh on, 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 on fair terms as compared to what is likely to happen in the years ahead when your equipment procured from China becomes older and you want replacements or you want uh, uh, servicing contracts to sign, it will be far more opaque and far more difficult to handle than what you will have with India in the years ahead. So uh, we, we, we take your points uh, with great amount of uh, humility and maturity. Uh, and I'm sure that the years ahead are only going to see uh, a stronger relationship between two countries that not only share a historical legacy, but also share a lot of economic similarities, uh, uh, you know, you know, on the path to growth and development. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, and our deepest condolences on the loss. Uh, and, and, and may God be with your family. Thank you so very much, sir. Uh, with that